Hey you guys, um, this is another follow-up tutorial um, for Architecture 254 where I'm asking you to create hybrid drawings. Um, there's the first three things that I wanted to cover which are um, utilizing um, some of the Rhino tools which are lens length, the lookabout, and the um, walkabout. Um, I also wanted you to try to create these drawings um, for your orthographic drawings as well. Um, so I'll just cover a little bit of that. I covered that some of that in the last tutorial, but just as a refresher. But this first part is about these three um, tools, and they're really important for setting up proper um, perspective um, uh, shots uh, of the model or of the, the piece of architecture they have. They're using these tools effectively allow you to inhabit the space a little bit more um, than from afar. So right now what you're looking at is uh, the same example that I've been using in the previous and you can see to get in for a perspective and let me just back out here there's a, some context these are just you know neighboring adjacent buildings and this is what's across the street. If I want to set up a shot that's really in that space, it's a little bit difficult, it's a little bit stiff, you know, we don't experience space necessarily like this. Um, and so it's not really doing this justice, I'm really inhabiting the space, I'm just really looking at the object, and it's because of the um, lens that's on the, the virtual camera that we're using to create this view. So this is just um, stock what you might experience in uh, in Rhino. So we can change, make some changes here um, to this view. So I'm going to right click show toolbar. Um, there are a series of other toolbars that you can um, bring up. One I'm going to bring up right away is called um, lens length. Um, and I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it up, park it up here in my tabs by a render. So we see here to the left, I have different lens uh, lengths. Also, um, similar to the um, positioning of the camera, if I go, to, I don't have anything selected. If I go to properties, you see here also there's a, a lens length option, um, as well as the um, the Z location that I had been talking about um, previously. Um, okay, so I have that height. I want to change this and if you're not sure exactly how to change this these are just some nice presets for it and each one is going to be a little bit wider um, to really get into the space I would probably use this 17 but I'll show you the differences here so right now we're at 100 if I go into 50 that's a little bit better so we're kind of getting into able to get really into that space a little bit more 25 even better, right? You can start to see um, a wide-angle lens starting to kind of distort a little bit, and that's a little bit more realistic in terms of how we experience things. Um, for this, though, I'd probably go ahead into 17. Um, to position this view, and you can see it's a little bit off of what I would like. There's some, this is basically the shot that I would want, but some of the some of the model is off. I wanted to capture perhaps um, the whole thing. We'll just double check here, make sure we're not too high, and I can set that view. Okay. So the next thing that I wanted to show you to make some further adjustments, because you can only orbit and pan around so much, there's some more fine-tuned uh, options to kind of setting up a view. I'll go to Show Bar. I'm going to bring up two at the same time. One is called Look About and the other one is called walkabout. So here's lookabout and go back here to W um, walkabout. Okay, so one is for looking around, one is for walking around. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna park these up here by now lens length. Okay, so look about, you can imagine this is how you might be standing. This is more like almost like a, a first person sort of a video game. Um, so you can imagine the person looking at this object 
um, the look about is going to really change the position of their head 360 degrees or what have you, um, or in all directions. So I can look up a little bit to make some adjustments to this. I can look to the side one way or the other way. I can look down. And so really just kind of fine tuning this view um, a little bit here. I probably would have to back out this dial in the middle. This is so you can change the number of steps. I already have it set at 240. I think the default is like 60. Let me just go type in 60. So then if I look up, it's going to be big jumps up and down. And when I had been working with it, I wanted to be a little bit more fine tuned with it. So I bumped that up to 240. And um, the increments are just much smaller. So I can really fine-tune the, the view here. Again, I, I'm, I can orbit and if I want to maintain that Z height I can hold my shift key down. Okay, then I could maybe say, well, maybe I'm just a little bit too close to this, right? Uh, get up just a little bit. Maybe I'm just a little bit too close. So then I can go to walkabout. So this is walking around. Instead of moving the head, this is actually the camera walking um, around so you can walk um, let's see what do we got here forward and backward we can walk right walk left and you can also um, elevator up and down so you can change your position vertically like you're in a virtual elevator um, so I can back up a little bit here, and again, this this um, the feet here instead of the dial with the previous the feet is going to be the increment, so you can change it from small steps to big steps or what have you. Um, okay, so I backed up. Let's see, did I back up just one? Yeah, I'm back up one. Um, then I can go back to look about, look down just a little bit, get this a little bit better centered. It's kind of getting better. I might just spin it a little bit more. You know, it's until you're really getting the right angle that you want. Just walk forward, and it's just a question of tweaking this until you get the right position. Um, you can also access the lens link, looks like right here, and walk about. Um, I'm going to change this to medium steps, maybe small steps. Back up just a smidge. So, to capture this overall thing, maybe I'm starting to be pleased with that. Down just a little bit, something like that. So you can really get into the space. Obviously, if I wanted to really inhabit the space, I could I'm going to change this to bigger steps. You can just really get into the space. Let's see. Walk forward, walk back. Huh. This flipped for some reason. Um. So you can see you can kind of get into the space a little bit more. For whatever reason, these all just flip direction. So walk right is left and left is right. No, that seems to be a little bit of a bug. Um, checking my height. I'm still at the same height. You can really get into the space then. And imagine a little bit more what it would be like to actually be in the space, right? Um, ghosted. And I could really just shift this around. Maybe I want to see what the view is like from this direction. I'm a little bit on the grass here, but I know I'm going to walk forward to about there. At least I'm going to try to. Uh, let's see if it's everything's still backwards. Um, so I don't know what that's about. The 
there was some glass that's off. Um, glazing, yeah. And then again, you can adjust this view looking up and down. So you can really, again, get into the space. You know, maybe something like that would be nice to be occupying that spot. Shift a little bit. I'm hoping that would rectify itself. I'm not sure why this is switched. Um, in any case, that's how you can set up the view. Then you would go through the same um, process for um, setting the views. Um, you can do that. Um, here, there's two bars. I guess I never really use these buttons very much. Um, I guess I'm just used to the workflow of going back down here, named views. I could save this as, you know, ground, maybe INT for interior, I'm kind of inside of the space, one, and now I can toggle between these views, because I've already saved them, whoops, I don't want to park that there, and they're just set. Okay, so um, that's those three. <laughs> Again, the hybrid drawings, I want you to um, explore, the, explore those um, in a hybrid manner um, as well. Um, for this particular project, since I have a good amount of um, context here, I'll actually need to hide some, if I want to keep context, and it's just a, a mass of a building. Um, so say I get into my right view, oops, I wanted to be front, so I can't even see, there it is. So it's in there, obviously there's a bunch of buildings in the way. Um, and I can kind of set up the view here by turning off, that's where layer management really comes into play. So I can turn that off and get this to the right. Scale, proximate scale. This is a little bit extra modeling. So I could kind of set this up the way I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> and perhaps I didn't really need to, you know, I could do that in Photoshop or something, add a, the building um, to the background. So that might be one way um, around it. Or I could go to my top view. I can go to site base. This stuff is all locked. Um, so I can should be able to select those, turn, turn those off. Now there's a building back there. So that's just a little bit to set up that drawing. So again, I can get this kind of close, and I know I want to scale it. Um, so then when I go to print, um, I can select my scale, I'll put, right now it's set at half inch. This is again as a smaller project, so it would be good to go at a quarter inch. I may want to lower it down just a little bit on that page. So I'll do that here, maybe get a little bit closer to what the actual view is. There we go. Go back into print. So it's set at a quarter inch scale, one inch equals 48 inches in the model. So that's correct for four feet. Um, and that can go to the various other um, settings that I have here. Again, you may want to um, set this up using a different kind of view so you can take advantage. At least these subtle kind of hues are, are helpful. Or you can go through an actual um, rendering if you wanted to try to do that. Um, right now I have the renderer set as the Rhino render. I believe I already set up the sun. Let me go into render tools. The sun is on. It's coming from the southwest. Um, so a little bit later in the day, let's see, three o'clock. Um, and I'm going to say all this is fine. This is actually in Milwaukee, but for the sake of this, let's see if Milwaukee's in there. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, 
Anyway, <clears throat> so I can show that. Um, and then I can go into render settings. And here's where I can set up the actual size of the render. This is different than printing. <clears throat> so this is going to go through a typical rendering process. <clears throat> so I have to set the size of the window. Right now it's set to the, um, let's see, you can have it be the size of the viewport. Um, so it's 2000 by 1058. Again, that's plenty big enough. Um, the ambient color I had set some time ago, um, you could try different colors um, with this. See, I'm going to cancel render. Okay. Go back in the settings. Uh, make sure that this is turned up all the way. 300 dpi, that's all good, good, good. Transparent background, that is good. I could turn on or off the skylight that's part of the sun uh, right now I have it off um, and then you can go ahead and render it now this is where the colors here from the layers are going to actually come through and this is going to be a little bit mixed up because um, like some of this was from this vegetation is from a different plugin for Rhino it's called Flamingo which is the a rendering engine um, and so then there are different, some other different materials here. So they're probably going to look weird because um, I'm using Rhino Render and not Flamingo. Um, but in any case, you could get some shade and shadow. Um, let's see. This is a texture that I had assigned for um, some of this. This is meant to be like a perforated metal or something or expanded metal. Um, so it's not finding that because. Um, Right now, Flamingo's not loaded here. Uh, so I'm just going to say continue. Now it's going to go through its process to render this. And this is kind of trial and error. I don't necessarily recommend to do this a whole lot. It takes a little bit of time to uh, make some adjustments. You can see here, it's just getting blown out. Um, the exposure is getting blown out here. Um, I am getting some texture, some shadows back there. Um, so it might be useful in concert with some of the other um, drawings. So you might think to maybe get some shadows, that sort of thing, from this renderer and then couple that with um, the exported image or printing an image of this view um, through the print tool. Um, and you can again bring those together um, in Photoshop later than together or what have you. So, you know, I wouldn't be happy with this. This looks all kind of freaky. Um, so I'd have to make some adjustments to the, um, I probably would go back and change this material just to have some transparency. So I wouldn't have that texture map there. I can just zoom up, see what it's trying to do. So that looks kind of weird. There's things that are just too shiny or too glossy, too specular. And so it's bouncing light all over the place. Um, so it would take a little bit of adjustment. That's why I, that could take, again, um, a good number of hours just to tweak to get the right sort of mix of materials. That's why I haven't really emphasized it um, in the class because I think time is better spent just on the line work um, and roughly what you can get um, from Rhino, even these subtle textures here are enough to give another line drawing some depth, some definition, some idea about shade and shadow. It's not as detailed as that, as that other, but still, I think, um, uh, usable um, for the drawings, at least a, a beginning step to understand how you can bring some of these together. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, thank you very much. Talk to you later.